Hey, what's up everyone? James from Junkyard Fox. Thank you so much for joining me on our very first stealth camping overnighter of 2023. So I recently made a post for you all to vote whether you preferred for me to make the next video a stealth camping video or a catch and cook. And just narrowly did the stealth camping win. So here we are in my city, as you can see, behind a Motel 6. And I recently scouted this little vacant area behind the motel that fingers crossed I can get to and it's clean enough and discreet enough where I can set up camp and just relax with minimal disturbance from the elements or people so I am gonna try to hurry and make my way over there and fingers crossed we have a great adventure so thank you so much for joining me let's get to it so I went around the side of the building because I was filming in front of the lobby and that's drawing a lot of attention. The clerks can see me. So I walked around this way, which is uh, much more calm and much cooler anyway, because it's burning hot on the other side. We're surrounded by a daycare, a gym. And this lot has a lot of semi truck drivers. And that's the goal over here. This little area that I'm gonna make my way to. So I set up my stuff down here in this corner. I would say that this is the cleanest, most discreet corner for me to set up camp later on today. It doesn't look like I was seen on my way over here, but uh, we still wanna keep a low profile because once again, the motel's this direction over here and they may have security. Also, if you are a tenant, you're not gonna be too welcoming of some weirdo close to your vehicle. So I don't blame anyone for that. Now over here on this side, it looks like it was, it's like a Texas unemployment center. And then over here on this side, there's a no trespassing U.S. government uh, property sign. So I'm steering clear of these areas. I'm not going to jump over there or anything like that. I'm not going to trespass. And there's also a chance that they may have security as well. So once again, you want to keep it on the hush. And overall, this area looks pretty promising. Of course, when you're stealth camping, you're not you know, wilderness camping. It's not full of beautiful, pristine rivers and stuff like that. There's garbage everywhere and piles of wood and stuff like that. So uh, it's a little grungy, it's a little dirty, but I think it's important for everyone that if you consider yourself a prepper, there's only so much gear you can buy. There's so many packs you can make. Sooner or later, you gotta at least do this once, once in a while, just to try it out, see where your strengths and weaknesses lie. Now, once again, I'm trying to be very subtle. I did scout this area a couple days ago. I always do it before I do any stealth camping. I scout it ahead of time. And truth be told, I actually found this area about four years ago. Uh, the missus at the time had kicked me out. I was in the doghouse, so I was staying at this hotel. And while I was back here, I found this area and I decided to look around and sure enough it, it's a good spot I realized that it would be useful for something so hey it paid off now anyway the Sun is close to being set I'll feel more comfortable once the Sun sets and then I'll go ahead and set up camp and make dinner so let's scout the area for now this is the area that I think would be pretty good now let me back the camera up a little bit now I know it's full of disgusting things so I'm gonna get my gloves and clear all this area out but this and this should call, should give me some good wind break. Not that we have a lot of winds today, but just uh, it just helps setting up a little bit of a shelter. So got to clear all this stuff out. Here is my gear. Of course, I have my canteen, which uh, I'm already kind of sh short on water. Today was such a hot day and I'm already halfway done. So I'm going to have to ration water unless I can find a place nearby where I can 
steal some. I have my Tough Possum gear haversack right here, Old Faithful. I have a review on it if you want to check it out up here in the corner. And then here is my Hidden Woodsman Deep Woods Ruck pack right here. I will be reviewing it pretty soon. You've seen this in my past two stealth camping videos, the one under the storm drain and in the abandoned farmhouse. So uh, yeah, just uh, set it up and I'm very excited. I really like the way it's set up. I'm, I can't wait to show you guys what I'm carrying because it is a little heavy. I'm not going to lie. If I had to estimate, I'd say it's about 26, 28 pounds, but uh, you know, it covers everything that I need in terms of food, in terms of shelter, uh, that kind of stuff, uh, hygiene, and so on. So once again, that's just what I brought. And of course, the tripod to help me film. I'm filming this solo. And yeah, I'm going to start clearing all this area out pretty soon. So there's the Motel 6 parking lot, and there is my sleeping area. Now, it's hard to tell. I would say it's very well camouflaged, even though I have two lanterns lit up. The lights camouflage to the government building behind them, so I don't have to worry too much about my lights giving me away. So I'm about 100 feet away. Let's get closer. There I am in the corner. Still, I would say, hard to tell that I'm there. I Even right now, I would say I keep a low profile unless you're purposely looking for it. And here we go. And very simple setup. Now, first things first, before everything, I cleared this area of weeds and garbage and this kind of stuff. You know, now, of course, when you're doing that, a good pair of tough gloves is invaluable, guys, because once again, there's thorns and stickers. And once again, we're in a place where there's a lot of homeless people. There could have been, you know, some needles in that kind of stuff. You don't want to prick yourself with anything like that or rusty nail. So some good gloves are going to make a big difference. And make it much faster to do something like that so i cleared the area out i placed the tarp as a ground sheet to keep dirt and debris off my sleeping arrangements you've seen this setup many times before i have my self inflating sleeping pad i use hundreds of times for camping i have the unigear inflatable sleeping pad that we're testing and with these two i'm going to be comfortable off the ground because if it wasn't for that i'd be miserable uh as i was cleaning i noticed there's a ton of tree roots and stuff like that so my my back would be knots in the morning so that's going to help keep me comfortable and it's a very warm day it's going to be a warm night it's going to drop to the 50s so i do have a wool blanket in case i get pretty cold but overall i think i'll be fine i think one wool blanket's enough and then i have over there my small one person poncho from one tigress it's going to double as a pillow tonight in case of anything i can set this up on off this fence to kind of make a little uh, tarp shelter in case it started like to rain or if i need to once again be more discreet but i doubt it and there's not a cloud in the sky so i'm fine there now once again i do have my two lanterns this one and that one but they camouflage to the building back there off in the distance so i'm not too worried about them giving me away and yeah i have my stuff here i will be making my dinner pretty soon when i do make my dinner i'm going to move away from this area and head off somewhere over there i don't want to draw too much too much attention too much commotion to this little corner so uh i'll go explore probably somewhere behind that tree and uh 
start cooking up dinner. Trucks pulling in. And so here we are, the sun has set and I turn off the lanterns on my bedding area and now it is completely hidden in the shadows. I mean, you would not know that there's a bed there. Uh, so once again, that is the parking lot of the Motel 6. Turn off into this corner and once again, you can't see a damn thing. It is completely covered, but there's my camp right there. I tend to keep stealth camping meals to be fairly simplistic, so I am going to make some mashed potatoes and I'm going to throw in some bacon bits just to jazz them up a little bit. And then as you can see, I am going with an old classic green chili, which I love putting on everything. And I'm going to chop that up and mix that with some mac and cheese. We mixed this up pretty good already. And now let's throw in some bacon bits in there. That's enough. And now for the mac and cheese. Not so sure about the mac and cheese. Now this is supposed to be microwaved, not with just boiled water. So this may backfire on me because it's looking very watery. Hmm. Let's see. We'll make the best of it. Almost forgot my spice kit here. Now you've seen this before. I ended up changing it up because I bought this from the Townsend's YouTube channel, their website. And the stuff that uh, it comes with, honestly, I don't use. Nutmeg and thyme, I don't really use those things. Cinnamon. So I changed it up and I modified them to the things that I like to use. So for example, we have some black pepper, which is a classic, of course. Everyone likes black pepper. Obviously. And some blackening.
and yeah you see my uh my mac and cheese ain't <laughs> it's more soup than anything so let me see if i can take some uh some of the starch from the potatoes and mix them on here and hopefully it absorbs it if not i just made a mess yeah no i made a mess so uh hopefully it's still good now let's get the green chili <laughs> and since I don't have a cutting board and I don't want to, you know, put my food on these things that have been sitting here for who knows how long, I'm just going to mano a mano, rip this apart and <laughs> mix it with my food. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's start with the mashed potatoes, which look far more appetizing. And uh, let's see, some bacon bits in there, some blackening, some black pepper. Very good. They came out very good. Let's take a little piece of some a strip of green chili. Mm hmm Oh, that chili has some kick to it. Very easy meal to make. All you gotta do is boil some water and you got yourself some mashed potatoes. <clears throat> now let's check out this sad little bowl of mac and cheese, which is all soup. <laughs> yeah, it's all... So... Once again, I'm trying to get some of the starch from the mashed potatoes to mix in here, but uh, it's not doing anything. Uh, well, let's give it a shot anyway. <clears throat> it's not bad. <clears throat> Man, that green chili is spicy. It's not bad, it's just watery. So it's very... It's more like mac and cheese soup than anything, but it has plenty of flavor in it. So like I said, you know, it has some blackening, some black pepper, some green chili. So not the best mac and cheese I've ever made, but not the worst either. So not too bad. Let's just take some with some, uh, green chili that's some good green chili right there very spicy so dinner was enjoyed it was pretty damn good the closer I got to the bottom of both I just mixed them together so it was just cheesy mashed potatoes with shells and it was pretty damn good now I know this place is a pigsty and it's all full of garbage, but we're not gonna add to that. So of course the bag that I brought the green chili in, we're getting rid of our trash and I will dispose of it in the morning because I'm gonna have a coffee in the morning as well. So might as well just wait till then. And yeah, time to start putting away all of the food and all of this stuff. Now, when I'm camping out in the wilderness, I really don't mind leaving this out Honestly, unless there's food up here, then you gotta worry about raccoons and black bears and stuff. But here in a urban camping situation, you wanna put everything away. So if you have to get up and haul ass and get out of here, your stuff's already put away. So that's what I'm gonna do. I still have a little bit of water here. I'm gonna put it away back in my canteen because I'm preciously short on water and I do still wanna make coffee in the morning and just put away all of this back in the pack.
I have a visitor. I've noticed there's a lot of cats in this area. And for those of you who don't know, I happen to be a cat fanatic. I have five cats, so I'm a crazy cat lady. And uh, this little guy right here, he reminds me of my, my string being back home, my baby boy. Hey, buddy. How's it going? <laughs> okay, okay, I'll leave you alone. Well, I don't mind their company so much. It's okay. <laughs> oh, <Aww>, cute. <laughs> so I'm going to head back towards the hotel area, towards the street. Uh, I'm very thirsty and I'm very low on water. Now, I did bring two full canteens of water, but it was a very hot day today and I was already starting to drink them before even getting here. It was very hot. And of course, with the dinner and all that. So I'm very low on water. I only have like one third of one canteen of water left and I'm still thirsty right now. And I still wanna make coffee in the morning. So I'm sure if I head up here to the hotel, maybe they have a lobby where I can fill my canteen with the water fountain or worst comes to worst, I could just walk to a, a gas station and just buy a cheapy water. But um, yeah, my stuff is over there, my camp and it's nice and tucked away so i'm not worried about anything right now it's nice and dark there's not a lot, a lot of activity out here so i feel okay uh with leaving my stuff there let's go get some water So no luck at the hotel lobby. However, there is a water burger over there. And I think I could just go in and either ask them for water from their drink dispenser or just go to the restroom and use their sink. So it's officially midnight. I am pretty tired, so I'm pretty ready to call it a night already. Now, this has been largely a very calming adventure. We haven't run into any adversity like nosy hotel goers or security or anything like that. But I mean, you know, we're not out of the woods yet. So just because it's calm now doesn't mean a maybe. This may be a place where a lot of, you know, crackheads and stuff hang out at. So I do want to play it safe. Now, one thing I did notice earlier when I was setting up camp and I was traversing through here is when you step on an empty water bottle it makes an annoying noise when you're trying to be quiet it's pretty loud so there's a lot of water bottles around here empty ones I'm gonna place them on the little trails that lead to my corner about 20 feet away so in case of somebody is trying to make their way to me they're gonna step on that in the darkness and it'll alert me so uh, something of an improvised alert security system but uh I, mean, I don't know how well it will work, but it's better than nothing, right? So, yeah, I'm going to get my gloves because I don't want to touch water bottles that have been out here. And I'm going to just grab a couple of them and then splay them around my campsite. Here we go. Here's a couple of them. So here's what I'm talking about. When you're walking in the dark, you're, you don't notice these. That's very loud. In fact, I shouldn't have done that because in case anybody's nearby but I'm gonna place these in these trails you, you can notice these little trails that either homeless people take or the cats the wildlife in this area but they're trails that lead there's another one right there there's another one 
right there. So once again, what I want to do is place them about 25, 30 feet away. And once again, if somebody walks by, that's going to alert me once they step on them. So I don't know, just largely improvisational. Can't say that it'll work with certainty, but you know, it's worth a try. Okay, so about 15 minutes later, I think I got it. So once again, this is my bedding area. And so I'm putting anything that crinkles, anything that, you know, makes noise that can alert me throughout all the little passages. Well, let's go this way. We got this one, this one, this one this one this one cans work well also right there right there right there and I threw a couple over here So it is much brighter than I anticipated. It's okay, it's not too bad. I also didn't want it to be too dark either. I do want to remain aware of my surroundings. But a big shout out to Motel 6 for sponsoring this adventure. To be completely honest, I actually think this little spot is pretty nice if it wasn't for all the garbage. But other than that, it's been a very pleasant evening. I am tired, it's already past midnight and i am ready to hit the hay guys so i'm pretty tired already i will see you guys tomorrow morning i'm gonna make some coffee then we'll pack it on up so thank you for joining me
scared the crap out of me. percent Colombian my friend And just for a little pick-me-up, I do have some of these honey stingers. Now, these are pretty good. I think that I like mainly the fact that they pack easily in your haversack because they're so thin. Um, and that they're pretty good, but I just wish they weren't so sweet. I, I think they have way too much sugar. Um, so I would really wish they had like a sugar-free version or something. So y'all let me know in case there's some, some sweet treat to have in the morning, but without it, you know giving you diabetes but overall I, I can't complain this is pretty good so yeah if you haven't tried these give these a try they're, they're pretty decent not bad not a bad morning. I will say it was a rough night. 
So, you know how it was so peaceful yesterday while I was awake? As soon as I laid down, all the action happened. So soon as I told you guys good night and I laid down, within one minute of that, I'm, I'm just looking up at the branches above my head and I see a flash of a flashlight and uh, a security guard starts looking around. And I mean, I don't know, it could have been co coincidence. She could have heard somebody else, but I'm thinking she heard me talking. And so you see her just frantic with the flashlight looking around the property. Once I realized I was safe from her, you know, she wasn't gonna find me. I went back to bed, but I'm dozing off again. And then I hear a loud bang and I look back and once again, it's that property back here and somebody's throwing out the garbage. Okay, understandable, I go back to bed. Around three in the morning, I'm woken up to this loud crash. I mean, I swore in my half asleep brain that, you know, a, a car accident happened 20 feet away from me, but it was the trash man, you know, taking the, the garbage, dumping it back, but it was so loud because it was so close to me and I didn't expect it. So that was very unnerving. Uh, and then it got cold. I mean, it dropped probably to 50 degrees, 51 degrees, which doesn't seem like very cold, but it does get pretty cold with a good breeze and morning dew. Yeah, it got pretty cold. So I used uh, my, my blanket, I'm sorry, my pillow, which was my one man poncho. I took it out and I used the poncho on top of the blanket. It helped a little bit, um, but yeah, it was, it was a rough morning. It was very cold. I did not want to wake up to make that copy. Now that I'm awake, I feel much better. But yeah, a little the, the night was a little wild, but zero problems from the hotel. Zero problems from the gym over here. It's just this little government property. There was just a lot of ruckus over there. So I went to throw away my garbage before leaving and I did run into this beautiful mulberry tree. Now check out these little mulberries growing. Now they're not quite ripe yet. But give it two weeks, and I would say that they're they're good to go. And these make a delicious wild edible, really good, really sweet. Uh, man, I grew up in a chicken farm, and my chickens love this. You would see their little beaks all red and purple because <laughs> they've been gorging on these. So this is a great wild edible that I've been wanting to make a video for a long time, and I just haven't found any in the wild. But here behind this motel, we're growing, <laughs> we're seeing some mulberries. So. Yeah, had I filmed this two weeks in the future, I'd be eating some mulberries. Well, folks, that's about it for me. I'm all packed up and ready to go. So I hope you enjoyed this adventure. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a success. I learned a lot from it and I hope you guys did too. So let's get a conversation going down below. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you. I will 10 times out of 10 prefer to camp in beautiful wilderness and practice wilderness skills, but that's truly not realistic if you consider yourself a prepper. It's fun to learn those things. It's, it's fun to get out there. But you got to do this at least once in a while and you know test yourself and test your gear and see what works see what doesn't where your strengths and your weaknesses lie so i realized that even on spring and a hot spring day i will get cold at night so i need to look into getting a baby or something like that to help supplement my warmth also learned to be a little subtle now normally i would take a younger james would take a harder route and try to figure out how to steal water somewhere where just walking into the restroom and using the sink from a from a restaurant helped a ton and saved me a ton of trouble and times. And also I did find the whole alarm system somewhat intriguing. Now it's a rudimentary alarm system at best, but it's something worth looking into, setting up all those empty bottles and cans just in case someone did try to get the drop on me in the middle of the night, I could hear that. And once again, it's a very basic, simple emergency alert system, but it's something once again and using the environment to your advantage. So uh, I don't know, maybe I'm overthinking it and giving myself too much credit, but let me know what you guys think about that. And that's about it for me, folks. Also, I did change my shirt because I was sweating putting away my uh, all my camp. So check out this sweet 
Junkyard Fox shirt. So if you're so inclined to buy some awesome Junkyard Fox or Gorbo Negro merch, I'll have the link down below. I would say, you know, to be completely honest, I, I think that looks awesome right there. Look at that. And all proceeds from our merch sales go into funding a trip to Utah that we're going to be taking next month to practice some bushcraft skills over there. Also, the link down below will be to our Patreon if you're so inclined to join. You guys get early access to videos. In fact, Patrons, you will be seeing this video a week early before everyone else. Thumbs up if you like this video. Comment down below if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. And I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now go outside and get your boots dirty. <laughs>